Hi friends, my name is Julie and welcome back to my farm. It's spring here on the farm, so that means a lot of baby goats and lambs are being born. And inevitably, you're gonna end up with some that need a little bit of help, and they're gonna end up as bottle babies. In this video, I wanna talk to you about a couple of the reasons that babies end up on the bottle, and what sort of supplies you need, how to feed them, when, how much, and all the basics that you're gonna need to know if you wanna raise bottle babies of your own. So this is Esme, and she's about 13 weeks and really doesn't need the bottle anymore. But as you can see, she, she'll still take it. <laughs> she's a pro. So I literally only have to hold the bottle for her and she knows what to do, as you can see. And she'll drink this whole thing if I let her. In fact, she drinks so forcefully that she collapses the bottle. And I gotta help her out with that. It doesn't take long for a baby to get to this point where they really know exactly what to do. When they see you coming with the bottle, they'll be on it. In addition to Esme, I have a couple of little babies that are about two weeks old. And while they're doing fine, their mom is doing her best to take care of them. She is small and she doesn't have a very big udder. And I'm worried that they're falling a little bit behind. So while I have an excess of goat milk from milking my own does, I figured I would help them out. The number one reason that you would need to bottle feed a baby lamb or goat would be because it's an orphan. That could happen for a variety of reasons, of course. You could lose the mother, or she could simply reject the baby. Occasionally, for the greater health of the mother, you'll have to pull the kids off of her and not allow her to nurse them. And that would be in the case where a mom gets really sick postpartum or um, if she's very skinny and she just can't keep up with the milk production, you may wanna pull those kids off of her sooner so that you can dry up her milk production and help her put some more weight back on faster. So the second reason you would bottle feed a baby would simply be to supplement them. So in the case of these twins, their mother is just not producing enough milk and I feel like they just need a little help growing, a little added nutrition. Yeah, and they're no trouble at all. Right. In the case of Esme here, her mother had twins and while she did her best to take care of them, she developed mastitis on one side of her udder uh, the day after she gave birth. So that side really wasn't producing a lot of milk. And while she was allowing the babies to nurse as much as they wanted on the functional side, and she is a pretty good producer of milk, I felt like Esme here was falling behind her sister. She wasn't growing as fast. So while I was milking some of my other does, I decided to start to supplement her. And, you know, as you can see, she is, you know, a big chunky girl. She's grown 
exactly how I would like her to grow at this stage. So I'm um, really happy I decided to do that. Another main reason you may end up with bottle babies is by choice. And this is very common in the show goat world. A female goat is judged largely on the condition of her udder. And having babies nurse on her will sometimes disrupt the structural integrity of that udder. It can end up lopsided or just not looking as pretty. So show producers will often pull their babies after the first day or two and start them on a bottle. And really, the younger the animal is, the easier it will be to train them to take milk from the bottle. If you wait a couple weeks, you're gonna have a much harder time. Once babies start nursing on mom, it's pretty hard to convince them not to. So in those cases, those babies would actually have to be separated from the mothers, and those does would be milked at least twice a day. And then that milk would be used to bottle feed the babies. And often in these situations where producers are bottle feeding a lot of babies at once, they're gonna have equipment known as a lamb bar, uh, which is a bucket with multiple nipples in it so that you can just fill up a couple gallons of milk and multiple kids or lambs can drink from it. I've also seen setups where people will build a wooden rack and the bottles just fit in that in a row and then the babies can come up and there's multiple nipples for them to uh, suckle from. But you're going to want to find more efficient ways if you're going to bottle feed your whole herd of babies. And then some people just want friendly babies. So the best way to bond a baby to you is to bottle feed it. It's gonna consider you its mother and caregiver. They will follow you around and be happy to interact with you. Now, if I were gonna sell these babies at weaning age, that would definitely help sell them faster. It would also allow me to sell them before they were weaned if someone wanted to take them on as a bottle baby, and I wouldn't have to worry about separating them from their mother at that time. So bottle feeding by choice can be a good option. The equipment you need to bottle feed a baby goat or lamb is really simple. You just need a bottle and you need a nipple and there are a few choices for nipples. I like these rubber ones that just slip over the top of a normal size soda bottle. I find that once a baby knows how to drink really well, that these are the best ones. I can really open up the tip and give them a, a large flow rate of the milk and they can drink it really fast. And that can actually be useful when you're training a baby to drink because they get the instant satisfaction because this will actually just drip a little bit of milk. So it gives them the idea that the milk is coming from that tip, whereas the smaller nipples, the Pritchard nipples, they actually have to physically suck to get some satisfaction. So sometimes I feel like those take a little bit longer for them to learn. The other side of that is that if this flows too quickly, it can cause them to aspirate or choke. So um, it's really just a personal preference. I like to have both on hand and when I'm starting to train a baby to suck, I'll normally start with the smaller Pritchard nipple and if they're not quite getting it, I'll move to this one. And in my experience, this one is normally the one they prefer and that I have an easier time with um, both in the beginning and over the long haul. The only other equipment I have are a measuring cup so I know how much I'm feeding and a funnel so I can get it into the bottle effectively and then I heat it by water bath. And that's because I'm pulling cold goat's milk from that morning out of a jar that's been in the fridge. So I wanna bring the milk up to about 100 degrees. Now, once a bottle baby is well-trained, they're really not gonna care. You could give them a cold bowl of the milk and they'll probably drink it just fine. But I like to maintain consistency with my animals. And from what I've read, 100 degrees is the preferred temperature. You definitely want to heat the milk slowly and safely. So a water bath, I feel, is the best way to do that. You don't want to microwave it. You can denature the proteins and make the nutritional value go way down in your milk if you microwave it. So that's not an effective way to heat it up. Also, if you heat your milk too quickly, you can scorch it and it'll smell bad. And then your babies aren't going to want to drink it either. So as far as what to feed, you really have a couple of choices. 
you can actually just get store-bought cow's milk and heat up the right amount and feed that to your baby straight. And they're probably gonna do just fine. For me, I'm milking a couple of my goats right now. So I have a surplus of goat milk and it's easy for me just to share that with any babies that need a little help. A couple of weeks ago when I was feeding Esme, I really didn't have enough for her and enough for our household. So I bought a little bit of cow's milk from a local dairy and I mixed that half and half with the goat's milk and she didn't even seem to notice the difference. Another common recipe that people use for bottle babies, um, I've especially seen this used for baby goats, is to mix one gallon of cow's milk with one can of evaporated milk and one cup of buttermilk. And that adds some fat and some probiotics to the mix for them. And while I haven't tried that recipe myself, I hear that that's a really good one for baby goats, especially if you can't get your hands on goat's milk itself. Now, for my baby lambs, I actually like to use a store-bought milk replacer, and it's a powder that has real milk proteins in it, and it's balanced for the proper protein and fat that a baby lamb needs. Now, sheep's milk has a higher fat content than goat's milk, and especially in the beginning, these babies really need that extra fat. So I like to use the milk replacer at least for the first six weeks, and then if I feel like they still need to be supplemented, and if I have enough goat's milk, I will switch them just to the goat's milk. But once they are eating solid food really well, and I feel like they're growing just fine, you could really switch them to goat's milk or even cow's milk at that point, and the lower fat isn't gonna affect them as much. As far as knowing exactly how much and how often to feed, I go by feeding charts that you can find online. Here's an example of one that I use as a good reference source. But I actually just use this as a starting point. Every lamb or baby goat is gonna be different. Some are gonna be born bigger than others, and some are gonna grow at a faster rate depending on breed and just genetics. So while I use those feeding charts as a good point of reference to start from, I really kind of feel out as I feed that baby how much they can take. If I feel like I'm bringing way too much out there and they're getting just a big bloated belly, then I back off. And I, if I feel like they're still really hungry or they still look sunken in after I feed them, then I'm gonna bring a little bit more. So you just kind of have to feel out what's best for your baby. Happy baby. While babies raised by hand do just fine usually, it's not exactly replicating what a mother or goat would do. She'll feed her baby all throughout the day, but in short little bursts of 30 seconds or less. So they're getting a lot more meals, but they're very small. Now Esme here, like I said, is 13 weeks old, so she really is old enough to be weaned. The only reason I have it is because I have a surplus of milk and I've got to come out here anyway to milk my does in the morning and to put the kids up at night because we're kid sharing and to feed these new babies now. Now, when I first started feeding her, she was just an infant, just a few days old. So I had to feed her very frequently. Smaller meals, but more often, about four to five times a day. So over time, we increased the amount that she could safely eat at once without upsetting her stomach or causing bloat and reduced the frequency of feedings. So for several months, I was feeding her three times a day. And then I progressed to two times a day and now she's really ready for weaning. So I've kept feeding her twice a day because I'm coming out to the goats at least twice a day anyway. So it's really not an extra chore, <laughs> but I'm reducing the amount of each feeding. And I'll just slowly reduce that till it's really nothing and, and then she'll be weaned. Occasionally, the way that we bottle feed in just a few larger meals throughout the day can cause some intestinal upset. If you feed your babies too much or too fast, especially in the very beginning, they're likely to have a little bit of diarrhea or scours. 
Typically, all you have to do is cut back on the volume that you're feeding them, and that will clear up on its own. If it doesn't, if it persists for more than a day, uh, I like to give them a little bit of electrolyte water and a probiotic to help them clear that up. Another problem that can arise is bloat. And again, if you just back off on the amount that you're feeding or maybe skip a feeding, that usually helps that quite a bit. You can also put out free choice baking soda. And if they need it to help reduce the acid in their stomach, then they can lick that on their own. And then another common problem that I see is while you're feeding them, um, they may choke. If fluid actually gets into their lungs, that's known as aspiration, and they can develop pneumonia from that. It's also just not pleasant for them to choke, so you want to avoid that. In the beginning, you want to be really careful about how much you're tipping that bottle back and the flow rate that's going down their throat. Don't give them more than they can swallow. So I've fed this little girl twice now, and she's learned pretty quickly what to do with the bottle. So I'm just gonna offer her the nipple before the milk is flowing. If she takes it, great. I'm gonna cup her chin and the nipple together in my hand, and I'm gonna slowly raise it. And you wanna see that she's actually suckling and that she's swallowing. And I can see that she's doing that. And as long as she's doing that, and I'm not choking her, and it's not running down her throat, then we know that we're doing a good job. I'm not forcing it down her mouth. She's kind of putting as much of that nipple in her mouth as she wants. She's chewing it a little bit, which is uncommon, but she is getting some milk. And then I'll give her a little break. And we'll see if she wants some more. I'll offer it to her again. And this time I'm gonna cup her face and the nipple a little bit tighter so that she forms a, a little tighter suck on that nipple. So a little too fast that time, but that's okay. Just let them cough it up. And just give her a second. We'll see if she wants some more. Yeah. You want a little more? And just slowly tip it up. No. All right, I think she's done. So we're gonna grab her brother and see how he does. So this is Elfie, the little boy. Same thing, I'm gonna offer him the nipple. Sometimes you gotta kinda push it in there a little more forcefully. And then I'm gonna cup his chin and let him suck away. There we go. And he's getting a really good suck. I don't know if you can hear that on the camera, but it's a good rewarding noise. You can also, usually if they're sucking really well, you can see air bubbles coming to the top of the milk in the bottle. Again, I don't want to give them too much. When babies are just learning like this, I like to hold them just so they can kind of focus and they're not trying to run away from me. Once they get the hang of it though, I'll just have to come out here and hold the bottle for them and they'll grab it on their own. But for right now, he's still kind of learning. So let's see if he wants a little bit more. Come on, Elfie. Want a little bit more? There you go. Are you sucking? Good boy. Yeah. Okay. And that's about it. So he may have just drank on his mom. He may have just eaten some hay because they're already on solid food. So if he doesn't want any more, that's his choice. I'll be out here later tonight and we'll give him a little bit more. Like I said, his mom is feeding him. So this, this isn't a life or death situation where he has to drink to get his nutrition. He is nursing on his mom all that he wants. I'm just making sure that he gets enough. So now that I know that the younger babies have had all they want, I'm gonna go ahead and offer Esme the rest of this. <laughs> and she's not gonna refuse. Oh, that's it, honey. I don't want her to suck a lot of air. So as soon as she's done, I take it away. <laughs> so one of the things that people don't like about bottle babies is that they do get a little bit too friendly sometimes. And you can see that she's not afraid to jump up on me. None of my other goats are doing that. She's small, so it's cute. It won't be so cute when she's big. So it's something I probably want to discourage. But generally, in my experience, as soon as you wean them, 
uh, within a few days, they'll kind of figure out that you're not going to bring them milk and they'll stop jumping on you like that. But she will certainly remain a very friendly goat. And that's one of the main advantages of bottle feeding. So when is the best time to wean your bottle babies? Well, in my research, there are a lot of differing opinions. In general, I found that most goat producers recommend bottle feeding until at least 12 weeks. Some go as long as 16. But when I looked at the recommendations for sheep, I found that many producers will wean their bottle baby lambs quite early, as early as five to six weeks. And I was really curious what the reason for this was. And what I've found in my experience, as well as what I've read from other producers, is that lambs are pretty good at stealing milk from other mothers. So they're not as mother specific when they nurse as goats tend to be. Goats tend to know who their mom is and that's the only one that they're gonna wanna drink from. But lambs seem a lot more opportunistic. Now, I know at feeding time, I've got a big long bunk feeder and all the ewes will line up and there are a couple of lambs that even though they're big and fat and their mother is feeding them just fine, will go down the row and sort of sample every udder. And I've had lambs that I've thought I would have to supplement as bottle babies, but then I've noticed that they just learn to steal milk from whoever they can. So I think this is the difference. But I would recommend that you treat every animal like an individual. And if that animal still needs extra nutrition, if it's small, if it's not growing, if it's weak, then you're gonna wanna keep bottle feeding it. But if it's really not that interested when you bring the bottle, if it's fat, if you see it nursing from moms that it didn't come from, then it's probably gonna be fine if you wean it. You're just gonna have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, if you have a dairy animal of your own, either a cow or a goat, then adopting a bottle baby can be a really good option for using that surplus milk. You could get what's called a bummer lamb or rejected lamb pretty cheaply. I've seen them as low as $25. I bet some farms would even give them away for free because they don't want to hassle with uh, having to feed that baby multiple times a day. That's just a lot more labor than they're um, willing to put in. So I feel like that's a really good option. If you have that surplus dairy and you want to raise uh, another lamb or kid for meat or maybe for a breeder. It can be a really economical way to add some animals to your homestead. If you're gonna take on the job of raising a bottle baby, know that it is an everyday, multiple time a day commitment, but it's only for eight to 12 weeks, depending on when you feel that baby is ready to be weaned. So if you can push through that initial time period, then you're gonna end up probably with a nice animal to raise. If you've been thinking about adding some bottle babies to your farm, then I really hope this video helped you. And if you'd like to see the video where I talk about how we raise our lambs in general, you can check it out right here. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you next time.